we're going to look at impairment testing of fixed assets in Chapter 11. In our example, Polo Company continues to use assets in the future, which have a remaining useful life of four years. The original cost is $9 million. Accumulated depreciation to date is $1 million, which means it has a book value of $8 million. The expected future net cash flows are $7 million. These are undiscounted cash flows and it has a fair value currently of $4.4 million. This is a two-step process. In the first step, you're going to perform the recoverability test, which is basically a screening test. This is going to let you know whether or not you've got an impairment issue. We're going to look at the expected future cash flows, which I mentioned before are undiscounted, and we're going to compare that to the carrying value. This particular asset fails the test because the expected cash flows are less than the current carrying value. And because it fails the test, we go to step two. So this first recoverability test does not give us the amount for the journal entry, but it does indicate whether or not we need to move forward with step two. We move forward with step two comparing the fair value, which is given at 4.4 million, to the carrying amount on our books of 8 million. And so we have a loss then of 3.6 million. 3.6 million is debited to loss and credited to accumulated depreciation. Basically, we're going to increase the depreciation that's on our books reflective in our accumulated depreciation amount. Now, at the end of the year, we'll have to depreciate our asset. So the carrying amount was reduced to the fair value of 4.4 million. So I can compute then over here on the side the 4.4 million divided by four years. So we're going to depreciate then the asset by 1.1 million. We'll debit depreciation expense and we'll credit accumulated depreciation. So our value is going to be 4.4 million on our books because we're going to basically decrease that asset by 3.6 million through the accumulated depreciation account and that new amount of 4.4 million was divided by four years the useful life and a quarter of it then is depreciated in year one so in year two we have a fair value of 5.1 million and we need to determine whether or not a journal entry is required to increase the assets value. We determined last year that the value was 4.4 million, we depreciated the asset accordingly, and then we found out that the fair value bumped up to 5.1 million. It's kind of a trick question because we really are not going to record an entry to increase that value. No entry will be recorded because of that fair value, we would only have the normal depreciation entry. Under GAAP, we're not allowed to reverse any losses on impairment that have been booked. So even if we have a future gain, we're not able to reverse the loss that we had recorded previously.